of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. God invites us to come into his presence and to worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins and trusting in my Savior Jesus Christ I pray, Lord have mercy on me, a sinner. God our Heavenly Father has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins 
in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. For all that we need in life, and for the wisdom to use all your gifts with gratitude and joy, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the steadfast assurance that nothing can separate us from your love, and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil, hear our prayer, O Christ. For the well-being of your holy church and all the world. And for those who offer here their worship and praise. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord have mercy. Merciful God, maker and preserver of life, uphold us by your power and keep us in your tender care. Amen. The works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise. O Lord, our Lord, how glorious is your name in all the earth. Almighty God, merciful Father, you crown our life with your love. You take away our sin. You comfort our spirit. You make us pure. God, the strength of all who trust in you, mercifully hear our prayers. Be gracious to us in our weakness and give us strength to keep your commandments on all we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first lesson is the one we will focus on for the sermon in a few moments. It comes to us from Genesis chapter 3. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden. And I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all the livestock, all the wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman. And between your offspring and hers, he will crush your head. And you will strike his heel. This is the word of the Lord. The psalm is Psalm 51a, printed in the service folder. You'll note we'll sing the verses responsibly by the full verse, so I'll sing the first four lines, and the congregation responds with the second four lines.
speaks to us in the second lesson from Revelation chapter 20. And I saw an angel coming down out of heaven, having the key to the abyss, and holding in his hand a great chain. He seized the dragon, that ancient serpent, who is the devil, or Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. He threw him into the abyss and locked it and sealed it over him to keep him from deceiving the nations any more until the thousand years were ended. After that, he must be set free for a short time. I saw thrones on which were seated those who had been given authority to judge. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony for Jesus and because of the word of God. They had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their foreheads or their hands. They came to life and reigned with Christ a thousand years. The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were ended. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy are those who have part in the first resurrection. The second death has no power over them, but they will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with him for a thousand years. This is the word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 3. Then Jesus entered a house, and again a crowd gathered, so that he and his disciples were not even able to eat. When his family heard about this, they went to take charge of him, for they said, He is out of his mind. And the teachers of the law who came down from Jerusalem said, He is possessed by Beelzebub, 
By the prince of demons he is driving out demons. So Jesus called them and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan opposes himself and is divided, he cannot stand. His end has come. In fact, no one can enter a strong man's house and carry off his possessions unless he first ties up the strong man. Then he can rob his house. I tell you the truth, all the sins and blasphemies of men will be forgiven them. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. He is guilty of an eternal sin. He said this because they were saying he has an evil spirit. Then Jesus' mother and brothers arrived. Standing outside, they sent someone in to call him. The crowd was sitting around him and they told him, Your mother and brothers are outside looking for you. Who are my mother and my brothers? he asked. And he looked at those seated in the circle around him and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. The hymn of the day we sing today is hymn number 596, Let Me Be Yours Forever.
May the words that I speak, blessed Lord, and all the thoughts of our hearts and our minds be pleasing in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Where are you? That question could be simple or it could be extremely complex, depending on what kind of information I want. Where are you now? You're in church, obviously. Or I could ask, where are you in your life now? And you might say, I'm a student on summer vacation, I am retired, I am midlife crisis, I am unemployed, I am working full time, I am parent, all those kinds of things. Of course, that question we hear in that first lesson, as I thought about it, I realized how many times have we asked that question generally of others, where are you? Now we can ask Siri or Cortana. I especially like on my phone, I have Cortana, and she has that really hard accent on Waukesha when she says it back to me. Where are you? I'm glad to know I'm there. This question is the first one uttered by God after Adam and Eve fell into sin. And this question reveals to us so much about ourselves, and about God. Of course, the fall into sin is a sad story for us to recount. Even sadder, though, is our lesson. What Adam and Eve do when God comes to them and asks that question, where are you? And we say, well, if we would have been there, it would have been different. How could they have fallen into temptation? Why were they listening to the snake? And now why are they doing what they're doing? We know how the fall into sin happened. The devil came and tempted. Adam abandoned his role as head and helper. They were convinced that they could be like God, and they were also convinced that God was withholding something good from them. And they sinned. Cast this whole creation into sin so that we even face sin. Now as we look at this interaction when God asks this question, we begin to see how ugly sin is. Where are you? God asks. Lost. Horribly lost in sin. Horribly lost now in a relationship with God that has been utterly destroyed. Adam and Eve would have rejoiced to hear God coming to them because they get to meet their Maker again. But now in sin, when they hear God coming, they run in fear and God has not even spoken to them yet. They haven't even seen Him yet. They just hear Him coming and they run. Why? Well, Adam was right. It was fear. But what has God done? that they should ever fear Him. All God has done for them is lovingly created them with His hand, in His image, and breathed into them their life and their soul and granted them a place unlike any other of His creation. He had set them in paradise. He had done nothing but give them goodness and every possible good thing. And they run because they are afraid of God. So lost in sin. Where are you? We see how lost in the foolishness of sin Adam and Eve are in that moment. They try to hide from God behind trees. The God who knows everything and is everywhere. And they think so long as they can hide themselves and not face God, they had done nothing wrong. Try to ignore it. Makes it all good again. Where are we? So lost in the foolishness of sin. Of course, when God asked that question, 
He's not asking it to gain information that he doesn't know. He knows what happened. When he asks, where are you, we see how lost in sin. We see in Adam especially when God asks him that question. Where are you? Well, I was afraid because I was naked. Oh, really, Adam? Because you were naked, huh? Really, what Adam is doing here is blaming God. Well, God, you shouldn't have been walking in this quadrant of paradise right now, or else you wouldn't have seen me naked. So it's your fault, not mine. So lost in sin. And then it continues. Did you eat? Well, God, that woman you put here with me, she made me do it. And then God turns to Eve. What have you done? That serpent! He made me do it. So lost in sin. But not only has the relationship with God been absolutely destroyed, the relationship with each other is also now wrecked. The relationship between human beings. For Adam... When God created Eve, he, she was the wow woman. Now she's that woman. So lost. That's it. What a mess. And as they try to solve the problem of sin on their own, what happens? They just get buried deeper and deeper and deeper as they try to get out. Of course, what we see here in Adam and Eve we know very well that sinful nature has come from them to us as well. We know how ugly and messy and tangled up we get with sin. In the same way, so foolishly thinking, the lust and greed that's in my heart and my mind, well, that doesn't hurt anybody else. Nobody else knows about it, so God must not know about it, right? The God who is everywhere and knows everything can't know what's going on in our hearts and our minds? No, He certainly knows. Or the blame. Well, it's not my responsibility that I fell into sin. I only went to the casino planning on spending 20 bucks. It's the casino's fault that I spent 2,000. My, my husband didn't love me the way that I wanted him to love me. He drove me in the arms of another man and into his bed. So lost. So foolish. One summer I had an interesting summer where my head kept running into things. <laughs> I fell down the steps once. My parents asked me why. My brother looked at me funny. They didn't buy it. And I wouldn't even been in trouble. And I still wouldn't take the responsibility for what had happened. So lost. So lost in sin. So lost in broken relationship with God. Foolishly thinking we could hide from Him, we could run from Him. So foolish that we deny sin's responsibility. Where are you so lost? I said before that God didn't ans ask this question because he needed information for himself. He knew what, exactly what happened. So, why did he ask? As he went and tried to find it, not tried, he knew where Adam and Eve was, but as he went to go to Adam and Eve, where are you? And Adam's peeking out from behind the tree. I'm naked, don't look. Why did he ask that? As I look at it, God had two options in this situation. The first is that he could have said, Adam and Eve, fine. You decide to listen to the snake and not. You decide to take your stand with him and also stand in hell with him. Have it your way. Or God could do something about it. 
to stop the crowd of his creation from running away. He could undo what sin has done and restore all that sin has lost. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all the livestock and all the wild animals. You will crawl on your belly all, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. God doesn't let Adam and Eve talk anymore, and that's a good thing. He stops them from talking, and now he turns to the serpent. And as he speaks to the snake, to the devil, he illustrates for us what's, what's happened here now in the fall into sin. Lines have been drawn. Adam and Eve joined the devil's side, so to speak, as they listen to him. So it's Adam and Eve and the devil on one side. It is God on the other side. Adam and Eve were on God's side, but they chose to change sides and listen to the devil. But now God intervenes and he says to the devil, not to Adam and Eve, he speaks to the serpent so they can hear. The devil learns what God's going to do. They join your side. I'm going to break, bring them back to my side. In sin you turned them against me and made them my enemy. I'm going to make you bear it. And this is how it's going to happen. I'm going to send one, one who is going to come from Adam and Eve. The seed of the woman. One born of woman, one born under law, and he is going to be the champion of salvation. And he's going to come to this earth that you think you rule. And you will fight with him. And you will do to him exactly what you have done to Adam and Eve. You will lie to him. You will tempt him by getting him to doubt God's word. You will offer him things that you cannot give. Yet he will not fall. Every time, you will fail. But then again, you're going to think you won. Because you are going to strike a painful blow upon this one. You think you, will, you have killed him. But as that happens, he will destroy you. He will crush you. Adam and Eve's sin ruined everything. But here in this word of promise, God makes everything right again. Where are you? Rescued in this promise. What, of course, is Jesus, God talking about here? We call this the protevangel. The first good news, the first gospel uttered by God to mankind. Not a Christmas goes by without this verse being recited. Because this indeed is the first Christmas. And the first Good Friday. And the first Easter. Here in this promise is the certainty of God's salvation for sinners. And this is Jesus. This is Jesus who is born of a woman, born under law. To do what? To redeem those under law. He has come here to live, as the writer to the Hebrews said, tempted in every way, just as you're tempted yet to remain without sin as our only seed. And yes, the devil will strike the heel. And our Lord Jesus suffers our death and the death of hell. But in that death, the devil is destroyed. His head is crushed. God makes it all right again for us. What our sin has done, that sinful nature that we sang about in the psalm, that we were born with, that sent us on the fast track to hell, 
God just as he did in the Garden of Eden steps into our life. Single-handedly, unilaterally, reaches out and saves us. We've seen that today in this service. What did you do? You came to God and you confessed. And I didn't say to you, you have to do this, that, and the other thing in order to be forgiven and saved. God reaches down and says, you're forgiven. Of course, this is nothing other than our baptism. Here, we're, here we are, brought as a child of nature, lost in sin, blind, dead. And God reaches down in the power of his word with that water. And he finds the lost. In our sin, we cannot find God. We run. He comes and finds us who are lost in sin. And he rescues us. Where are you? Rescued and saved. And this is amazing what God has done. Why has he done it? There's no reason. And yet we come to where we always come. It is only God's love. It's only God's love that in that moment of sin, He doesn't let Adam and Eve try to figure out their own salvation. He steps in and intervenes. That He makes choice not to let that which He created perish forever. He made a choice there in that garden to send His one and only Son, born of the woman, to rescue those lost in sin. He made a choice to undo what Adam and Eve's sin has done. This is only in our love. His love. And how this changes everything for us. The sinful nature we'll still live with and we will still sin. You know that, I know that. But everything has changed now because we're back on God's side again. We mark sin and Satan as the enemy that they are. With one heart and mind and will with our Lord God who has created us and redeemed us, we hate sin as much as He does. But now when we do sin, we will not run away from God. For we do not fear God. When we sin, we will run to God. Who forgives our sin. We run again and again and again. Hiding nothing. We run and we look into his own face as we receive his salvation. We run to him. Where are you? With him always in this life. And of course we know just as Adam and Eve kind of went a long distance in such a short period of time. They were one with God in paradise, in perfect harmony with Him. They sinned, lost it all, and in God's Word had it all again. And we know where this ultimately will end. Where we can ask, where are you? Rescued? In paradise. Amen. Please stand. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. Amen. With one heart and voice, let us confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, 
and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Please stand. Gracious God and Father, we praise you for the countless blessings which we receive from your hand. The beauties of creation and the bounties of the earth, the joy of life and the pleasure of friendship, the good of work and the gift of rest, the privilege to share happiness and sorrow with one another. Above all, we praise and thank you for your saving word and for your Son's body and blood which you give us to eat and to drink in the sacrament. Through these means of grace you send the Holy Spirit into our hearts and unite us to Jesus and to the whole Christian church on earth. Strengthen us through this heavenly food. Increase our trust in Christ and our love for one another. Great God and Lord, without your continuing help, we easily waver in our faith, lose courage, and grow careless in our watchfulness. The times and days are perilous. Give us strength to face the evils of each day with fresh confidence. Open our lips to speak of your grace and move us to use the gifts that you give us to share your word of salvation with all people. Protect and prosper the family, the school, the government, and all good institutions that you have established for the benefit of society. Remember in mercy those who are sick and suffering and bring your healing to troubled homes and lives. Move us to pray for those in need and to help them with deeds of kindness. Heavenly Father, we join in thanksgiving with Dave and Charlotte Markle in the celebration of their 50th wedding anniversary. We thank you for the many years of blessings that you have poured out upon them. Now be with them in the future as you have been with them in the past. Continue to fill their hearts and their home with your abiding love. Heavenly Father, we commend all who are sick and suffering into your tender care. We pray especially for Nels Jacobson as he continues to be hospitalized. We also pray for Jeff Smith's father, Herb, who is in hospice care. We pray that you grant faith and strength to them, patience if their suffering must linger, and grant them the sure hope of everlasting life 
with you. And Lord of life, we marvel at the way you bring new life into our, into our world. In Thanksgiving, we praise you for blessing Ryan and Kathy Schrader and the grandparents Beth and Mark Schrader with the gift of a baby girl, Emma Sophia. We especially thank you and praise you this day that you receive this child into your arms through the waters of holy baptism. Wash away all her sins. Begin the new life in her and keep her in your tender care. Now hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. Now, eternal God and Father, keep us in the saving faith and so enable us to overcome all things through our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He sends the Holy Spirit to testify that we are His children, to strengthen us when we are weak. And now have come the salvation, and the power, and the kingdom of our God and the authority of His Christ. To Him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, the whole earth is Jesus Christ on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me then he took the cup gave thanks and gave it to them saying drink from it all of you this is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. O Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ. Christ, you have received the true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. May it strengthen you and keep you in Christian faith and so life everlasting. Go in peace with joy in your hearts. Your sins are forgiven in Jesus. Amen.
Please stand. We join to sing, thank the Lord. the prayer of your people, O Lord, that the lips which have praised you here may glorify you in the world, that the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again, and that all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Please be seated. Hymn, hymn number 316, O Jesus, blessed Lord, to thee. Mm -hmm. 